So, good morning, everyone. Um, okay, going to make this presentation five minutes shorter. Uh, wouldn't impact the, the content at all. Um, so, welcome at this, this talk. Um, and um, I had a kind of hand-raising game here. I'm not going to do that. Um, let me start with uh, introducing myself. Uh, so, my name is Dion Alstorn. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, so that's make me Dutch. That makes me Dutch, and that's the, the funny accent you're hearing. Um, and I'm a software engineer at Walters Kluwer. Uh, and if you don't know Walters Kluwer, we're an, uh, a global company, um, uh, and we, we provide services, information, and software for our clients. And we are about 90,000 uh, employees large, so that gives you an, an idea about the size of the company. And um, we use solar quite a bit uh, in, in Walters Kluwer, and we use it for uh, several of our divisions. Like we have a division for tax, for uh, accountancy, for uh, legal, and we have a division for uh, medical research, and that's the division I'm working for. Um, and I'm working on a product that's called Ovid, uh, which you probably don't know, but it's the world's leading um, uh, online uh, content delivery and search tool. Um, and it's used by uh, medical people. So it's a medical research tool used by medical doctors. Um, and it, it's used in universities, in large hospitals, in uh, pharmaceutical companies, in large libraries, um, well, etc. Uh, we have um, more than 350 million documents in our index. Uh, so it's quite large, and we get our content from over 100 content providers. And some of the providers, they uh, give us updates every week. Uh, some providers give us updates every month with new content. And we even got some content providers that give us a big update every year. And they call it a reload. We get uh, the same content with some new content, and they probably gone, they have added some new uh, fields to it, and they deliver us a, a reload. And some of these uh, reloads could add up to, well, 25, 26 million documents, so they're big reloads. Um, and our platform does about 600,000 searches a day. So that gives you a feeling about the size of, of the system. Um, okay, let me show you how our uh, infrastructure looks like. Uh, but before I do that, something about this talk itself, like the title, Loading 350 Million Documents into a Large Solar Cluster. Um, uh, we use Scrum, and uh, on, with Scrum you have a product backlog, and this piece of text was actually on the product backlog, so it was one of the requirements of the system saying, you have to load 350 documents within eight hours. Um, and you probably understand we want to load all the 350 million documents, but why within eight hours? Well, that's a good question. Um, and the, the business value for us of um, being able to load uh, 350 million documents within eight hours is, uh, well, one of the things I, I talked about, the reloads, the yearly reloads. Some of our content providers, they uh, do yearly reloads with a lot of documents, could be up to 26 million documents. And we want to process that as fast as possible so we can index it and hand it to our clients. Um, so their time matters. The sooner we, we're done indexing the new data, the sooner we can give it to our clients and they can use it. Uh, the second reason to do this is um, to to have the flexibility to do a re-index of all your data. For instance, when we decide that we want to do a different kind of analyzing of our data, maybe use engrams or shingles or uh, uh, use different languages, uh, we want to have the flexibility to do that very fast. Uh, and, and we want to do that between the updates we get during the day. So we can hold off the updates one day, which is good, and we want to do the full re-index that day and then the updates coming, uh, coming in the next day. So that means we have to do it within eight hours. Um, 
okay, if you look at the, the raw numbers, so 350 million documents in eight hours, that comes down to about 12,000 documents a second, um, which is a lot, but it, it isn't groundbreaking, right? I, I saw a presentation of last year, they were, uh, Rackspace, they were doing about 50,000 uh, documents a second, which is much more. Um, <clears throat> but it's still a lot. And it depends on the kind of data you, you have and the kind of content you have and the kind of indexing you're doing. Um, and we can say, yes, we did it. So we, uh, we can handle this kind of load. Um, and one of the main important things we use that is uh, a, a cloud platform to do all pre-processing. And then we'll show you that in, in the later slides. So one of the big answers here, one of the, the, the solutions to do that is, is do all pre-processing uh, not in solar, but in a different environment. Um, now the question, can you do it? So after you uh, listen up my talk, are you able to do this? Okay, the answer is, it, it depends. Uh, it, it, it always depends, right? Um, you got a lot of data, but every data is different. Maybe your source data, you need to get it out of a SQL database with a lot of complex join queries, stuff like that. Or maybe uh, you got a lot of content in your, in your documents. And it also depends what kind of uh, analyzing you're doing. Do you do uh, shingles, engrams, difficult stuff? Um, it also depends on your, your solar environment itself. Like, uh, are there a lot of users querying and hammering your solar environment? If so, you cannot do that much of indexing because it will make the query slower. You don't want that, right? Um, these are all kind of things that, that I have to say, it depends. But, um, well, after this talk, I can assure you, you get some things out of it. So it means that uh, you can do indexing faster using your uh, the solar cloud you're running at the moment. So I give you some good examples, some good things we did, and you can re reuse to uh, speed up indexing. Um, Okay, this is the, uh, uh, our overview of our environment. So this is the, the, the schema of our environment. And um, let, me, let me walk you through this because it's quite large. And here I'm only showing the service tier we're using. Um, so let's start with looking at our, our solar cloud. This this one. <coughs> and we're using 80 machines with, uh, on each machine, three uh, nodes three solar nodes. Uh, so it's a big solar cluster, right? So, um, and when looking at this, you see two special servers at the bottom. And those are servers that don't contain any uh, index data. They don't contain any shards of re or replicas. Um, the sharding and the indexing is only happening on the first 16 servers. Uh, and I can explain you how it works. We, uh, we have one, well, fairly large collection, uh, and we use 16 shards for that collection, and we have several smaller collections. But when we talk about the large collection um, with the 16 shards, what we do is we put the first shard on the first node of the first server, and we use kind of a striping technique, uh, which means we put a replica of that shard on the second server and another replica on the third server. And with our second chart of our largest uh, uh, collection, we do the same. So the second chart we put on the first node of the, the second server, and then we stripe it out on the uh, servers that come after that. And we do that for all our shards. And this way we can guarantee that even when two servers completely go down, we still have all our content available. Um, okay, our solar servers are, they're big machines. They're like eight core machines with a lot of memory. I think it's 56 gigs of memory. Um, so they're large machines. We're running solar 5.5 to give you an idea about the version. Uh, we're all running on the uh, latest version of, of Linux. Um, and you see the two servers on the bottom. Uh, they don't contain any shards, replicas, or whatever. 
we just use them for query time. Um, and we found out that that worked better for us. It speeded up queries. Uh, we had three zookeepers running. Uh, we tested it out. For, for us, three zookeepers uh, worked. And for you who don't know zookeeper, it's, it's like the zookeeper manages all the, the your solar cloud, like it's distributed config, uh, configuration. And, and you need that to run your solar cloud. Okay, on the left, you can see our business services. And um, we have a lot of services that uh, kind of, uh, that use solar on the back end. And our business services, they do scale. Uh, they scale up and they scale down, uh, the matter on, on how much traffic we get. Um, by the way, the business services are not Java, they're, they're written in .NET, which means we cannot use uh, SolarJ as a client. And that's basically the reason we're using a load balancer. So our services, which are .NET, use a load balancer to talk to the two query servers at the bottom. Um, and then I'm going to show you the, the, the ETL cluster, our extract, transform, and load cluster. And that's basically uh, the place where we, uh, we receive all the content from our content providers. We uh, unzip it, we transform it, we enrich it, and we load it into our solar cluster. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it's, it's totally scalable. So it can scale out and scale down. And I think this, this is one of the main reasons we were able to uh, load that much content into our solar cloud. Because all processing, pre-processing of the content is done outside solar. So we're not, um, the solar serves itself, they, they don't have to do transforming of XML, stuff like that, or enriching. That's all done outside solar. And we can just scale up. For instance, the ETL cluster, we, we scale it up to about 25 servers. We do a lot of pre-processing and then we basically tear down the complete ETL cluster. Uh, and that only works when you got like uh, uh, Amazon or Azure where you can uh, just add new VMs and scale it up and down. So what comes out of the ETL clusters is complete pre-processed XML. Um, and it, it, it's just stun, a standard solar XML as you know it. it. Just like the basic examples when you first install solar you get this kind of solar XML. And we love XML files. And the cool thing is you can always uh, look at the XML files, see what content you published to or, or uh, uploaded to uh, solar, so you know what's in there. And you can grab, use, use tools like grab, uh, grab to, to search in your files. You can uh, zip the files. Uh, you can even zip and, and, and back it up somewhere to use it in, in next time. Okay, we started out with this. So we have just plain solar XML files. Um, and our first idea was, okay, let's use poster jar, which is, uh, well, like the, the, the obvious out-of-the-box choice, right? If you install solar, you got a lot of example documents that say, well, use poster jar to post your content into, into solar. And by the way, the, the new versions of Solar, they, they just got the, the post, uh, uh, the post uh, in, instead of the poster jar, it's the post command. But the poster jar is still in there. It's just kind of hidden. Um, so what we did on all of our ETL servers, we were running uh, a version of poster jar to extract all the content and then post it into our Solar service. And what we found out is that when we're doing a lot of ETL loading, we were overloading our solar cluster. They were uh, getting very, very busy um, to the point that we need to, uh, well, basically stop and see what's, what's, what's happening. Why are they uh, not indexing as fast as we expected? Um, and the thing with solar is uh, uh, um, when you look at the logs, uh, we found a lot of uh, lines like this um, saying update.distrib is too leader. 
which to us was a bit weird because we were not sending these kind of requests to our solar cluster. Um, I think probably a, a few of you already know this, uh, but I can explain how poster jar works out of the box. And that's like, like this, poster jar, also called the simple post tool. Okay, for instance, you see on the right, you see my uh, uh, solar cluster. I got two shards uh, with two replicas, right? Um, and on the left, you see the, the, my XML files, my input files. So when you use poster jar, it just takes XML files and it posts them to one of your uh, nodes in your solar cluster. Um, but you have to know that in, if you're working in a solar cluster, all indexing is done by the shard leaders, not by one of the nodes. Uh, so that single node you're sending your data do to, it actually has to find out the, which uh, shard, which document belongs to. So it's gonna, what it's gonna do is split out the document saying, okay, half of the documents needs to go to shard one leader, the other half needs to go to the shard two leader. Um, and these kinds of requests are the, the update to district two leader uh, requests we got. Um, and after that, this happens, the shard leaders are gonna uh, update all their replicas. So we've, we found out, and, and you can imagine if you got a lot of shards, there's a lot of internal rerouting of uh, documents. Uh, and what we did is instead of posting all our data to one of the, sh uh, one of the nodes, uh, we used a, a load balancer to, uh, well, pick different nodes to send our data to. And we found out that when we're doing a lot of indexing, all our nodes were busy uh, doing both indexing and rerouting all the content to the shard leaders. And if you want to do indexing as fast as possible, you basically only want to do the nodes to, to do the indexing and not do the rerouting, right? Um, so what we did is um, we built a, a, a special kind of poster jar and we call it a cloud poster jar, basically a cloud aware poster jar. Um, and from the inside it uh, uses SolarJ, which is, uh, well, one of the things that helped us doing a lot of uh, indexing into our machines. If you use SolarJ, you can connect SolarJ to Zookeeper instead of just posting to one of the, of the solar nodes. And when you connect it to Zookeeper, uh, the cool thing is that uh, whenever you upload a document, it gets uploaded to the correct shard leader instead of just one of the, of the nodes. Um, and from the inside, the cloud poster jar is just an XML text reader, how you would expect it to be. So it loads some documents, which are XML, uh, and it, it basically generates solar input documents, which are documents ready-made for uh, solar, and you can post them directly to the solar cloud. Uh, and we added some, some extra features, like we were using very large XML documents which are basically too large to even copy across networks. So what we wanted to do is load uh, zipped first, zipped XML files. Well, we changed it a little bit, so instead of, uh, in addition to the XML stream reader, it can also read from a zipped file. And that makes a lot of sense for us. So our input uh, files are smaller. And we also added something to post uh, files in parallel. So instead of posting one file, waiting and posting the other, it can post like four or five files at the same time. We're gonna share this on GitHub very soon. Uh, still working that out. Um, so um, for everyone who's interesting, uh, interested, I'm gonna send you an update uh, about this. We're gonna post on GitHub. You can have a look at your, uh, for yourself how this works. Just quickly, let me show you how it works. So the cloud poster jar is connected to Zookeeper. And that's the big, well, it's not a secret, but it's the trick that makes it work. Uh, so whenever we uh, have our solar XML input files, we, which can be zipped, by the way, uh, Cloud Poster Jar exactly knows to which shard leader it has to send the content. So that makes a lot of sense, right? So you don't have all the, the shard nodes doing all the rerouting internally. You don't need it anymore. Um, Okay, what we then built is even uh, uh, 
we found out that when we running even cloud posts on all our ETL servers, it still um, did a lot of uh, uh, data sending to our, uh, to our cluster. So we wanted to make it more uh, robust. I'm gonna click here. So you remember our ETL servers, right? Doing extraction, transforming, and loading into, into solar. We changed something there. So instead of uh, uh, loading, we took off the loading part and we said, okay, all the ETL servers are just doing extraction, transformation, and queuing. Basically saying, here's all the data, we put it in a blob storage somewhere. Uh, we put a message on a queue saying, uh, this is data for you ready to, uh, to load into solar. And on the other side of the queue, we have a couple of these uh, uh, cloud post demons uh, running. Just watching the queue, taking a message from the queue, getting the data from uh, our blob storage and getting that into, uh, into the solar cloud. And it's, this kind of works like, like a funnel. So instead of all our ETL servers sending updates, they just put a message on the queue and the workers do the work. Let me show how that works. So this is what we did. On the left you see our ETL cluster, posting all this, the, the content to our solar cluster. Uh, what happens now is this, the ETL, if, whenever an ETL server is done with its work, it just copies the, uh, the content into blob storage. It's gonna send a message to your queue saying, okay, there's a, there's a job ready, uh, and it points to the blob storage in the, in the message. And we can basically, after that, close down our ETL uh, cluster. And at the same time, uh, on, the other way of, on the other side of the queue, we have some Cloud Post workers. They take in a new message from the queue. They see, oh, there's a new data available for us somewhere in blob storage. They're gonna take it out of there and they're gonna post it to our uh, solar cluster. And this is our big funnel, like the cloud post worker. We, we have the moment, we have three of those cloud post workers running. And each of the workers, they take in one job after another. So uh, this works like a funnel, right? We can put a lot of data into the queue and into blob storage but only the cloud posters do the work. Um, <clears throat> of course, now the question is, there's a queuing system, and I just showed you the infrastructure diagram, and there was no queuing server on there. Uh, so what did we use for that? And the answer is we use Zookeeper, um, which is, uh, uh, you, you get Zookeeper when you're running Solar Cloud, um, and Zookeeper, uh, actually is an excellent system to host the queue in because uh, um, it has something that's called sequential nodes. Whenever you uh, add a, a child node to a node in Zookeeper, it gets a new number, like it gets a sequential number. And for each new uh, node, it gets a higher number. That's perfectly suitable for queue. And Zookeeper allows you to watch uh, a node and all the, the child nodes of a node, and that's excellent to use for a queue. It also got, uh, like it's atomic, you can use transactions. Uh, and another cool thing, what I want you to show is, um, when you use Zookeeper, um, it, kind of, it, it kind of gives you a user interface for free if you use the same Zookeeper uh, as your solar cluster is running. So what we've done, we've built a, a, a queue node uh, in the same Zookeeper instance of our, our solar nodes. And then when you go to uh, the solar admin site, and I'm not sure if you're all familiar with this picture. There's a picture of the, the, uh, the admin site of solar, uh, which, which basically all only shows you the collection, configuration, stuff like that. But because I've added a new node in, uh, in the Zookeeper, you now see, I'm not sure if that's clear, you see collection loader at, at the top there which is basically our own, uh, our own node. Let me take a couple of minutes to walk you through this. So um, I just showed you all the workers, like the post, uh, the, the post cloud workers, right? Whenever we connect a worker to uh, our zookeeper, that worker is gonna register itself uh, under the worker node. Um, not sure if you can read it, but you can see there's one worker running at the moment. 
and we show it, its process ID and on which server it's running. So we, well, we basically know where the node is, is running. And here you can see there's an, an, uh, a node that's called new, and that's our new queue. So whenever we, in our ETL server, we post a new message, we basically add a new node under the new queue with, an, uh, with a new sequential number. And all the workers, they watch the new queue. And um, they basically, when, they, uh, when there's a new message in the new queue, one of the workers gonna pick that up and move it to the in-process queue. Uh, and the cool thing about Zookeeper is that it's transactional. So even when you got like 50 workers, only one worker is able to move the task from new to the in-process. And the other workers are, are gonna fail. They're gonna fail with a message saying node is not, uh, is not there anymore. And for our workers, they don't care about that. They say, okay, the node is gone. Probably another worker has, has picked up this job and done the work, right? Um, so when it's in, pro, uh, in progress, the work is done. The, the, the loader is gonna load all the data and move it to, to done. Um, I'm not gonna show you everything about this, but uh, the, the cool thing is you can also just click one of the tasks and you can see inside of the task what's in there. So here you see an example with, uh, it's an update command for a specific collection and uh, you probably see here that there's some, uh, some, some notification of a path which is basically pointing to uh, our blob storage saying there are the source uh, content you have to load. Um, what finally works best for us? Two solutions. Okay, so for our initial loads with a lot of content, we decided not to load on our live uh, uh, solar cluster, but doing on an, a separate isolated uh, cluster. Uh, and you have to mention that, that uh, it needs the same amount of shards there. Um, so what we do for a large update, we actually index it on a separate environment. With no users, no user queries, we can do max load there. And after that, we just uh, uh, copy the index files to our live environment. Um, and for the small daily updates, well, I, I say small, but they can even be like 30,000 documents up updated or 60 or even more. Uh, the, those kind of things we do on our production out, uh, environment. Um, we use a single commit. So we do all the updates and we do one big commit. So we don't have all the, the, the issues with reopening a new index searcher. That, that only takes time, right? Okay, conclusions and takeaways. Um, <clears throat> what really worked for us is to do all the pre-processing outside solar. So just Keep your solar cluster for doing, handling all the user queries, do the indexing, but not uh, XML transformations, enrichment, stuff like that. Keep that out of solar. And we, yeah, we were lucky to be able to use like a cloud platform where we could scale up to 30 machines, do all the work and then scale it down. Um, but still, if you don't have, to have a cloud platform, you can still use a separate server for this. Um, and we use the queuing system to prevent overfeeding on solar. And that's the, the funnel I just showed you with the workers. Um, okay, when, uh, when you have a lot of XML files, uh, don't use the standard uh, poster jar. Uh, look at some, some clever way to use uh, SolarJ because SolarJ knows all the nodes in your cloud server. And uh, it works better than just sending it to one node. And okay, one of the final takeaways, if you've got a lot of index to, uh, a lot of content to index on a live server, try to do the indexing on a separate environment. You can even, uh, well, uh, create an environment just on the fly at SVMs in, in, a, in a cloud environment. Do the indexing there. And uh, notice you have to have the same amount of shards there. Otherwise it, does, it isn't gonna work. And don't use any replicas. Just index without replicas then copy, copy over all the, the index files. Um, and if you're running on Solar 6.1, uh, you can even use a backup and restore of complete uh, uh, solar uh, collections, 
which is even more nice. You, you don't have to do all the backup and restore yourself. Um, do we still have time for questions and answers? I think a couple of minutes, right? Um, if you've got more questions uh, after your talk, which I, I can't answer, this is my uh, email address. Uh, we're going to post the cloud poster jar tool, which is, it's not that big a tool, but it's, it's, if you post some XML files, it's very handy. It's going to save you a lot of time, do more indexing on your solar cloud. Uh, uh, you saw the, the worker, uh, um, the zookeeper workers. Uh, I basically used the master worker example from uh, the book from O'Reilly about zookeeper. If you want to build a system like that yourself, use that example, it will work out of the box. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so the the question is about what do we still have some time or yeah okay so yeah you want to know about the the, the configuration of our our service right what what kind of okay i think maybe, maybe <laughs> if you come over here we can we can talk about that I think time is up, right? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs>